Well, first off, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, thank you for the kind words. I am excited to be here. Um, it's a pleasure to say that I am a part of this organization. Um, so first off, thank you to everybody that's here right now. Um, for me, playing against Liberty last year, um, I saw a shift in the culture. That was for sure. Um, the, the way that they played, you know, high octane basketball, um, playing both sides of the ball. Um, a lot of young talent that was very, you know, lively. And you can see that they were invested in, in winning and, and like I said, changing that culture. So um, for me, I wanted to be a part of that. Obviously, great coaching staff. Um, you know, you, you've seen what Sandy's done, um, what Olaf has done in their careers. And so, um, yeah, just wanted to be a part of that. And um, to be in, in a city like New York, you know, it speaks for itself. I don't really have to say much about that. So um, altogether, just felt like the right move. I know it's the right move um, for this chapter in my life. Appreciate your time and insight. Thank you. And I have a question for Jonathan and Sandy. This is kind of a joint question. You know, going into what's basically year three of the Sabrina Ionescu era, how important was it to surround Sabrina with a proven and a downright historic talent like John Quell as we go into the proverbial so important third year of a franchise faces career? Yeah, I think for me, anytime you have a chance to get somebody like this right here, you jump at that. You have to. Um, players like John Quill do not become available very often. So the, the idea of pairing her with Sabrina is really exciting. Um, and I think they're going to be a dynamic duo for a long time. I really do. Great to see so many familiar faces. Uh, this is a really great day to welcome JJ. I've admired her for so many years and, and now I get to coach her. So really, I mean, I'm super excited. Glad that she's super excited and, and she chose New York. But look, Sabrina, I think you saw the development of her game last year. I think her and Natasha did great in the pick and roll game. But now we're adding another player of the calibre of JJ. You know, obviously, she's a stretch four. She can play inside. She can play outside. She's great in the pick and roll. She's a facilitator. So when you've got really two great players on the court, how do teams guard it? You know, that, that makes it a little harder. It's a chess game. But, look, I think the upside, I spoke to JJ, I think the sky's the limit for her. And that's our goal is continue to improving her game uh, with the players that we have here. And she's just a, it's a perfect fit. So we're super excited to have her here. Uh, ben Pickman from The Athletic. How's it going, JJ? In the back here. What's going on? Um, before looking you know, at some of the Liberty perspective, I do have to ask about Connecticut. You know, there was a report that you did request this trade. I was wondering, you know, what was the, I don't know, the straw that broke the camel's back or what led you um, to want to change in direction in, in your career? Yeah, um, you know, obviously I've been or was in Connecticut for in the entirety of my career until this point. Um, and for me, I felt like it was just time for a change, um, time for a new chapter. Um, if you go back to any of the, you know, Connecticut front office, you know, we had that conversation about me stepping into a new chapter in my career. Obviously, uh, bubble season happened. I didn't play. We had some injuries in Connecticut at the time. Um, and so for me, last year was like, okay, let's see what this team looks like. Full strength, fully healthy. Um, but I came into that season knowing that it would probably be my last in Connecticut. Um, but I wanted to give it my all and I wanted to see what that team looked like and what it felt like. Um, obviously, we didn't accomplish what we wanted to accomplish. Um, this is a new chapter, but um, ultimately, I knew that uh, for, the, for my growth as, a, as an athlete and as a person, I wanted to be able to step into a new situation, um, come into a new organization and, and better myself. So um, definitely uh, something that took a long time to think about, but um, I'm happy that I chose New York and I'm happy New York chose me. We're going to go to Jackie next. Hey, all. Uh, Jackie Powell with the next. Good to see all of you. Sorry if I'm doing this. The sun's just in my eye. Um, <laughs> I I'm going to start with, with JJ. We did that? <laughs> OK. Um, <laughs> you are a player who has had a lot of experience in the playoffs. and. This is a roster that you're entering that, you know, they've, they've had an elimination game. They've had a first round series. And so my question for you is with the amount of playoff experience you've had and the amount of playoff heartbreak that you've had, how, I guess, do you think you're going to grow as a leader, you know, with all that experience you've had, giving that to this young group of players? Yeah, um, great question. Uh, I think I'm going to 
you know, thrive in that role. And I'm extremely excited to be in that role to um, be able to, you know, help the younger players and uh, be a voice of reason, whatever they need to talk about, I'm here. Um, and, you know, being in Connecticut, I can, you know, tell them firsthand that you may think that you have more opportunities, but no opportunity is as important as the one that you have before you right then and right now. Um, and so I think that's going to be extremely important is getting, um, you know, letting them understand that every opportunity matters and every chance you get to step on the court is opportunity to play your best. And, um, you know, the future is not promised. So in order for us to maximize our potential, uh, play at the level that we know that we're going to be capable of playing at, which is a very high level, um, we're going to have to be, be willing to, to sacrifice and, and play hard every game. Appreciate that. And for Jonathan and, and Sandy, you know, with, with JJ on this team, I'm curious about how the identity of this team changes. Uh, the, the narrative in the past couple of years has been that this is a gritty group, you know, that's underestimated and that works hard. And so when you add someone that's so talented, like JJ, how do you imagine, I guess, the identity staying the same, but also changing? Well I, well, I think the, it elevates everything you spoke about. I mean, to be a championship winning team, you look at the best teams, like what did Vegas do well? Okay. But like for us, I've spoken about playing great defense. Uh, well, she's a, you know, she's been in all defensive teams. She's one of the greatest rebounders in the WNBA. That helps our game already. Um, you know, and we want to making sure that we're putting the right pe people around her. We've got, you know, obviously JJ, but we also got Kayla Thornton in this deal. And, you know, she, her defensive rating last year is, is, you know, I think she was seventh in the league. That's quite impressive. She's got that toughness. So we're getting players together that complement each other. Um, you know, we want, still want to play basketball in the right way. You know, it's playing at both ends of the floor, committing to be not just a, a great player but a great teammate. That's how we achieve all the goals that we've set out in front of us. And, you know, that's why JJ is such a big part of what we want to do here and, you know, we've made progress, but we want to make, we want to win. So that's a goal of not just the New York Liberty, but every organization. Um, and look, that's signing JJ's to, uh, helped us that first step to get closer, you know, to achieving that. But a lot of hard work needs to go in it before we can get there. All right, we're going to go to Zoom very quickly and then we'll come back to the room. M.A. Vopel, we're ready for you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I have a question for, for JJ and then um, one for Jonathan. Um, JJ, I know you, you were trying to win Connecticut's first championship, and I know that meant a lot to you. Um, you guys came close. What would it mean to you to help New York, uh, an original WNBA franchise, win uh, a first championship? Oh man, that would that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Um, everybody knows that New York is a basketball city. Um, you know, the people love love the game. Even when we just being here, I went to the grocery store. People are talking about it already about winning the championship. You know, I go to get something to eat. People are talking to me about it. So, um, you know, they're really excited about it, and um, it would mean everything to me to be able to to bring a championship here to New York. But also, I think it would mean a lot to the WNBA um, and for the league and its growth. And so. Um, yeah, I'm excited about it, and, and, and I know that, you know, we, we can get there, and, you know, we keep working hard every day. It's definitely something that we can achieve, so um, I'm really excited about the opportunity to be able to do that. And, and Jonathan, just how big this move is, which is enormous, um, free agency is still coming up. Can you just talk about the fact that uh, the Liberty may not be done in terms of, of what the, how, how different the franchise may look going into this next season? Yeah, I don't... Uh, happy to talk about it a little bit. I don't. I, <laughs> Is that what? What? <laughs> I, I I I know this answer will draw groans from from here to Syracuse, but it's not five o'clock yet, and, and we don't have official free agency list. So look, we're going to be really aggressive. I think we're helping on bringing a championship here. It's what we've said from 2019, and we're going to say it every single year. But I think we've proven that we are willing to be aggressive, and we will continue to do that. And so. We're very excited at the opportunity to add talent and uh, we'll see how this plays out over the next few weeks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, John Quell, Owen Pence with Windsider and Nets Republic. Uh, welcome to New York. Outside of the basketball element of things, what excites you most about coming to this city? Oh, wow. Like I said before, um, you know, just everything off the court, you know, marketing wise, the people, um, it being a basketball city. Um, I think the opportunities are endless. Um, and I think that was one of the biggest things that excited me. 
Um, and, you know, I think growing my brand too, like not, you know, not shying away from that and understanding that it's an area that I can grow in and, um, you know, being able to, being able to do that as well. Have you had any good meals here yet or experiences yet or? I've just, I've just been trying to get settled, but you know, they have, they have some, some, some fish in the back for me. They have some guava dove. So, um, I, I was very impressed to see that already. So, um, yeah, I'm, I already know it's going to be good food. So I definitely got to stay in the gym when I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi, John Quell. Miles Ehrlich with Winsider and Nets Republic. Um, with Sabrina and Maureen, this team has two of the most creative pick and roll guards in the W. So having seen that from the other side, how do you project their ability to draw and read defenses will open up the floor and help your game? Yeah, I think it's going to be amazing. I think um, everybody's going to eat off of us being able to, to thrive in a pick and roll. Um, I think defenses are definitely going to have to respect them. They're both, uh, you know, players that are known to be able to score at a high clip. Um, like you said, be able to create their own offense. So um, I think it's just going to open up things for everybody and um, it's definitely going to be mutually beneficial. So yeah, like I've been saying the whole time, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> and Sandy, great to see you. Uh, last season, the team struggled at times with consistency. So how do how does adding players like John Quell and Kayla Thornton just take a step towards addressing that challenge? Yeah, I mean, I think the consistency thing that all basketball teams try to achieve, don't they? And and I think when you get someone uh, with Kayla and JJ's experience, that helps. It's a settling. They've been in these big moments before. Uh, we relatively had a young team, although we did have a lot of injuries too that we had to overcome. Um, but, you know, for us, it's more about what do we need to do to be better? You know, we can't be happy with what we've done. We made progress, but okay, let's let's get better. And, and you know, obviously Jonathan and I, we speak and I hear him all the time about what do we need to do? And, you know, we're very lucky and, and happy that JJ chose us. Uh, she could have went to many other different teams, but she chose us because I think she sees the vision that we have set out and, and you know, we think we can make her even better player than what she is. And she's an amazing player already. So excited about, you know, integrating her with the, the core group that we do have. And, and as you said, you know, free agency, we still want to keep being aggressive and continue to build this into a championship winning team. But um, players, na the names of players doesn't mean you're going to win a championship, does it? And it's all about coming together and um, building the teamwork that we need to, to be great. And JJ's had opportunities to play in WNBL fi WNBA finals. And I think that experience will help us as we move forward. Hi, uh, Meredith Cash, Insider. I'll start with you, JJ. Welcome to New York. Um, you know, free agency and more generally player movement around the WNBA is still a relatively new thing for this league. Uh, I'm curious what it's been like to see that progression and, you know, see your own name in, you know, WNBA Twitter rumors and just chatter throughout the off season. Yeah. Um, I think for me, like I was, I was telling uh, some of the front office members here, like I'm, I'm pretty bad with my phone. Right. So like, I think for me, it's, it's beneficial though. Right. People hate it. Sometimes they're trying to reach me and I'm not picking up my phone. So I just kind of like, I'll rest it down somewhere and, it may be hours before I pick it up again. And so I feel like it's kind of helped me manage this whole process really well. Um, for me, it kind of was really quiet. Like, obviously I requested the trade. And first it was, you know, me having meetings with teams and, you know, talking to coaches and really seeing how I would fit in with, with the core groups that uh, all the teams had. Um, and then I made the decision. Um, and, you know, we were talking about having a press conference and, uh, you know, just letting everything come, I guess, naturally or the way it's supposed to go. And then like, it breaks on Instagram and it's like craziness, just complete frenzy craziness. Like, and I think that's when my phone just started going crazy. And, um, you know, I hit up my agent and I'm like, well, can I talk about it now? Like everybody's talking about it on social media. He's like, well, it's not official. So no. So I'm like, I'm just sitting there just scrolling and seeing stuff. And I'm like, this is crazy. Everybody else is talking about it, but the person who's in the trade can't post and say anything. So um, it was definitely interesting, um, um, but I'm happy for the league that, you know, that we can get to this point and that player movement is something, um, you know, that draws the buzz and excitement and ultimately grows the league. And, um, you know, for the New York franchise, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy because I feel like it's going to be not just important for, for the organization, but important for the WNBA. Uh, to follow up with Sandy and Jonathan here, um, you know, end of season press conferences last year were 
there was an emphasis on free agency and what this team could be this year. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't think JJ was part of that conversation. Um, when did you know that this was going to be a possibility and what was the process like to bring her into the fold? Yeah, so I'm trying to really retrace this because it, it seems like a blur to be honest with you. Um, it really does. Yeah. And it seems like it took a long time to be fair. Um, I mean, one backstory I have, uh, you know, we always prepare for free agency well in advance. You never know what's going to happen. I, I, I've had a John Quell Liberty jersey in my office for a year, and I'm not kidding, because I thought before last year when she got court, I thought, hey, maybe we'll take a run. I've literally had that in my office all year, all season. Um, and when we heard after the season that there may be movement, um, we, we threw a hat in the ring right away, as you would imagine, probably every team in the league did. Um, and the process was simply that we, we got on a call um, with, with our coaching staff and, and, and with uh, JJ, myself, uh, Ohima, uh, and Sabrina, actually. And we had a conversation about what this can be and how special it can be. Um, as you, you all asked earlier about winning in New York, there is nothing like that. We want to do that. So um, we jumped at that chance. And like I said, the, the transaction itself and the negotiations, it – goes a million different directions and uh, I've, I still probably haven't slept but um, now now I won't sleep just because of excitement so that, that's that's pretty much how it went down. Grady Diaz, hi JJ. New York City has a very big West Indian population. We're both of West Indian descent. How would you like the New York Liber Liberty to celebrate us um, and also the league? Um, well, you know, that was one of the, the big things that actually drew me to New York as well. Um, I kind of had like a list of teams. And after I spoke with spoke with them on a Zoom call and, and the marketing team, they that was an emphasis for them. Before I even said anything to them, it was like the West Indian culture. What can we do? How can we tie it in? And so for me, it just, you know, I could tell that they took the time to really think about where I was from and, you know, the, the communities and the people that we can impact, which is also extremely important to me. So, um, you know, obviously the Bahamian uh, Consulate General is here right now, and uh, it means a lot uh, to, to the Bahamas, but it also means a lot to the West Indian uh, community. So um, I'm all heirs and I'm open to anything that we can do, but um, the marketing team has already been on that. And so, like I said, that's what drew me uh, here, but you know, games for, for, for West Indian people, definitely the food, um, you know, whatever we can do, we're going to try to do it. Absolutely. Um, one more thing that suit is clean, by the way. Thank you. My second question is um, from a season ticket holder, Deidre, who I know you will meet at some point. Um, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to actually doing here? Or what are some, what are some of the things that you like to do here? Oh, we man. have to know. Yeah, I mean, for years I've been trying, I know this is going to seem really like touristy, but but yes, I've been trying to watch like the Lion King on, on Broadway. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just like waiting for the time that I can actually go. Um, my girlfriend went without me. So it's been a, a popular topic that, you know, I'm upset with her about that. But um, so we get to go now. Um, just just exploring the city and really seeing what it means to, to you know, be a New Yorker because I've always done the touristy things. And so just really kind of getting it from that more, um, What's the word authentic point of view in terms of you know being a new yorker and i think i want to definitely be more immersed in like the sports culture too like going to games and stuff because i love baseball games i love basketball games and to say that i'm a part of a city like that now and i'm really excited for you know coming from a smaller market so um i feel like it's endless and my mind is just like constantly thinking of things to do but um i'm gonna be out there for sure <laughs> all right we're gonna quickly go to zoom um annie constable this question is for JJ. Hey, JJ, Annie Costable from the Sun-Times in Chicago. Um, we asked a question, MA asked a question about free agency, but obviously it opens up tomorrow. How are you approaching your role recruiting players who have been linked to the Liberty already? I mean, anything that the organization needs me to do, I'm there. You know, obviously we want to put, put our best foot forward and, and, you know, I'm all in on, on whatever they want to do. But as of right now, like you said, we haven't really done anything. It hasn't started yet, but when it does, we'll, we'll be there. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mark Schindler. Hey, uh, JJ, really nice to see you. Uh, so Sandy mentioned as well, and you've mentioned too, in terms of taking the next step with your game, when you're thinking through that, you know, envisioning what it's like playing with Sab and just being in a more spaced out offense, what what kind of things are you thinking through or um, envisioning maybe being that next step for you? 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the things that we talked about with the coaching staff is just me, me being a little bit more efficient um, out of pick and rolls. And I think that's going to really open up the game. Me just being able to, you know, roll a little bit quicker, understanding how to space it out. Um, I think all of those things are going to open the court up. Obviously, like I said before, Sabrina is going to be able to, you know, create her own shot, find me in the right time, right space. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. And um, I think the attention that I, I draw was going to allow her to be able to be successful as well. Awesome. And then uh, Jonathan, for you, um, you know, we just spoke recently about, you know, some of the difficulties of being a GM and, and going through some of the, 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 the player management. Um, when you are inversely, you know, from talking to JJ, when you have to, you know, call Beck Allen uh, and let her know she's being traded or, or letting Chris, Dan Chris Dangerfield know, like, what is that like as much as you can kind of let us know? Yeah, it, that's a good question. I, I I'll keep some of that private just from the sure. sense of, um, you know, just personal relationships, but those calls are really difficult. Um, one thing I think I'm proud of is that people, people want to be here. And so it is hard to break that news to them. Um, but what I will say is everyone was a professional on those calls. Um, and they, they understood the business side of this, which gets said a lot, but I really have to emphasize this isn't fantasy basketball. There's real people on the other side of these transactions. They matter. Um, they want to be here and things like that. So, um, yeah, doing those calls it is tough, but it is part of it. And it's part of getting better as a team. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Lastly, we're going to go to Sasha Lightborn on Zoom. Good afternoon. Hi, JJ. What's going on, um, Sasha? Right. Yeah. My first question is actually for Jonathan. Jonathan, do you understand that you have actually accepted an entire country on your yes. back now? We're, uh, we're thrilled. Yeah. So the entire Bahamas is now a part of the New York Liberty. Um, and my question for JJ, JJ, you know, I saw you in Connecticut. You're now in New York. Um, what, how will you get, and I'm sure it's going to be so much easier to get to New York from the Bahamas because there, there are many direct flights. Um, what would you say to Bahamians now who, who have never had an opportunity to watch you play in person and just try to encourage them to come out to some of your games? Yes. I would say that, like you said, it's a lot of direct flights. So, you know, start booking the tickets. Um, you know, the, the schedule is already out. It's, it's right there. You can Google it. Um, and, and we're ready. We're excited to have as many behemoths as possible. Let's pack the house. Let's show up and, and, and let's be proud because um, um, I think the product that we're going to put out there is going to be really, really great. Um, and I would love for behemoths to be a part of that. But um, yeah, this is the, the New York Bahamas. 